Bless every one of you in Jesus' name. And also, I want to thank uh, all the people that gave us gifts <coughs> during the Christmas and New Year. I really want to appreciate you for all the gifts. And the Lord will bless you more and more in Jesus' name. you to the year 2024 our year of great harvest i am 
by name Pastor Ibukonlu Baba Femi Williams. And together with my wife, Pastor Moshalewa Williams, we are humbled and honored to be appointed as the new continental overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Continent 8, Oceania, Australia Pacific. We thank God for His grace and mercy upon our lives. And we thank our general overseer, Pastor Inok Adijari Adeboye, for his trust and confidence in us. We also thank all the pastors, elders, workers, and members of this great church for your prayers, your support, and cooperation. My, my beloved brethren, we are entering a new year and a new dispensation in the history of our church. God has great plans and purposes for us in this continent, and he wants us to be a part of his end time move. He wants us all to be a light to the nations, a salt to the earth, and a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. He wants us to be a people of power, of love, of sound mind. He wants us to be a people who will shine the light, impact our communities, and make disciples of all nations. But to achieve this mandate, we need to be united in spirit and in truth. We need to be one in Christ. As he, Jesus, prayed for us in John chapter 12, verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. We need to put asunder, aside all our differences, our grievances, our offenses, and our divisions. We need to forgive one another as God has forgiven us in Christ Jesus. I read. He 
It shall come to pass after war that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall bring dreams. Your young men shall see vision. Pastor Tinan, and also on my maid servant, and on my maid, maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Amen. So this is the promise of God for the church in this end time. That God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. For those of all that, that were here on the 31st night, I told them that one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is one. Amen? That one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is one. And that is confirmed in that Bible text that we read. He said, and it shall come to pass after war that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This year, your words will not be empty. Amen. This year, the words that will be coming out of your mouth will carry power. Amen. That means, be careful, don't say negative words. Amen? He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. To prophesy means to foretell, to say something, amen, by the Spirit of God. And as a child of God, you can prophesy also. Even some of you, what is happening to you today is as a result of your prophecy, what you said about yourself yesterday. Amen? It's as a result about what you said about yourself yesterday. I mean, some years back. There are some of you that say, ah, in my life, I'm going to live in abroad. Amen? Yeah. Let me tell you a story, something that happened some years, about 40 years ago. By the way, I'm from 49 this week. God. Amen. There is this place in Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos, Nigeria. Some of that has that stayed in Lagos, they call that place in Kotwibi. How many of us know in Kotwibi? <laughs> so, I used to live in that place. Yeah, about 50 years ago. So, you know, children, in that place, that area was just growing. The area was just growing then. So then this thing that we, they call it tank, whenever they want to build, the, the, the bridge here, they will build like a tank, four corner with, with uh, blocks, and they will put, they will plaster it, that's where they put the water that they will use to, you know children, <laughs> that is our swimming pool. <laughs> so when those people are free, they are watching in the night, they have to go, go there in the evening. Swim, we swimming. So one day, one of my friends, everybody I think of, you know children, that's why our children they are prophetic. That's why when they say something, they protect it. Some of them are prophetic. So as we are swimming, swimming, swimming. One guy, his name is Waidi. I can never forget. His name is Waidi. He just came out. He said, how many of you will travel abroad in the future? How many of you will travel abroad in the future? One came out. He said, ah, I will go to London. I will go to London. The other one came out. He said, I will go to Japan. The other one came out. I said, I will go to one country called Australia. I don't, even know, I don't even know the map. I just said it. I said I would go to one country called Australia. Far! And that way he knows about the job. He 
He says, Sonny, you are crazy. You don't know what you are talking about. Australia, the end of the world. I did not. You know the family that I came from. Poverty. I don't even know how the tickets will come. I don't know how the visa will come. But I said it. And I'm trapped to a far country. And today, the prophet said it's not to pass. You know how I remember this story? Is that there that I told you? He said, Pastor, do you remember that? Years back, when they are playing, and you said it. So, what am I saying? Some of the things that has happened to us today is as a result of what we said yesterday. I know there are some of you that are sitting down here. You have been silent. Because there are some people who say, ah, there are some people in here who say, for well, any time I sleep, I will see myself in the midst of white people. In the name of Jesus, your dreams will come to pass. Amen. So God said, your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall, and your young men shall see vision. So this is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and in that place he's talking about a new wine. And that is the Holy Spirit that God wants to give to us today. In this year, God has promised us the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a new one. And I've been praying for everybody. And I'm believing God that as the year goes on, some of you, you begin to operate in the supernatural. You are not saying anything. Some of you begin to operate in the supernatural. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Very soon, some of you, God will begin to show you things before they happen. You just begin to see yourself that even some of you, you have it before, but you have lost it. But this year, it's going to be restored. Amen. I said it's going to be restored. Amen. There are some of you, you used to dream that whenever you, you had a dream when you wake up and you tell your mom, you tell your wife, you tell somebody, the dream will come. Us. For now, it's like it's no more operating. But I prophesy this year, those things will be restored. Amen. Because this is a new one. Not only that, God will be giving you divine ideas. Because when the new one comes, only the gift of God in you will be activated. The gift of the Holy Spirit that has been dormant will be activated. And God will begin to give you ideas. And those ideas, some of the things that God will be doing for us is that you will know what to do by time. You will not be confused again. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when He's directing you, when He's leading you, you can never make mistake. And I see that happening in our lives. I said that I see that happening in our lives. And God will also, will also give us ideas that will lead to success. That will not make you to be an employer of devil. In the name of Jesus. Did you say that? Do you want to continue to work for people for the rest of your life? You don't want people to work for you. Yeah. You have been saying yes and yes, boss, yes, boss. It is your turn. Amen. I said it is your God. Not in Africa, in this Australia. Amen. Your common idea that will make you, that will make you what you'll be looking for, you'll be sitting now. Amen. Through the option of the Holy Spirit, you'll be sitting now. Amen. I said it here that when the Holy Spirit comes, it begins or activate believers to action. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, it quickens you or activates you to what? 
to action. And this year, every step that you take, go with other hands. Every step that you take, you lead to promotion. Every step that you take, you lead to success. Because the Holy Spirit is the control. When the Holy Spirit comes, it quickens. Some of you, ideas you just quickly in your mind. And you will promise. And the moment you implement it, the next thing is breakthrough. I said that will be your portion. I said that will be your portion. It will quickly you to choose the right wife. It will quickly you to choose the right husband. It will quickly you to choose the right partner to do business with. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11, the Holy Spirit quickens us or activates believers to action. I want King James Version. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, 11. King James Version. Is that King James? Okay, because I want them to follow. He said, For in the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwells in you. So one of the things that the new one will do for us is that he will quicken us. Some of you, you cannot pray, you cannot fast, but by the reason of this new wine, God will give you strength. I said God will give you strength to fast, to pray, and to read the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the same time, He will quicken you to manifest the glory of God. Amen. Here in Australia. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, but there is one thing that we must do before we are filled with the green wine of the Holy Spirit. Very, very important. I want you to take this point. Very, very important. There is something that you are not to do before we can be filled with the new wine of the Holy Spirit and to purge ourselves from filthiness of flesh. Amen. I said, Holy Spirit. That means it's holy. He cannot dwell in the dirty place. And that is why it is very, very important. For us to do what? To point ourselves from every form of dirtiness in our flesh. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, when Paul was talking to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, he said, Therefore, Point out the old living that you may be a new love since you truly, since you truly are living. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was what? Was sacrificed for us. Therefore, Master, let us keep the feast not of the old living. Not, not, not with the living of malice and wickedness, but with unliving bread of sincerity and what? And truth. So we need to point ourselves. And that's why they told us in the book of Luke, our Bible, they said we cannot put new wine into what? Into old wine skin. Because if we put the new wine into the old wine skin, the old one was called the new one. And here also is telling you that we need to know what? To point ourselves. He talks about malice. He talks about wickedness. He talks about not being truthful. So God said, before I can give you new one, you need what? The punch. And Paul stressed it. He stressed those things. That we need to point ourselves off in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, from verse 19 to 21. Paul applied them 
He applied those things that we could point ourselves off. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. Now look at this thing together. He said, Now the works of flesh are evidence which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, loneliness, 20, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of God, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies. 21, envy, murders, drunkenness, rebellious, and like, and, and the life of which I tell you before her, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now look at yourself in the mirror of the world. All those things that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 8, chapter 5, 7 and 8, Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21, are they in your life? But God is saying, if it's there, if you can come anyone of them in your life, this is time for you to do what? To purchase. So that you can be able to do what? Receive the new one. And that is the kind of examination. The Bible says we should examine ourselves with that we are seeing in the world. Hallelujah. And if you, if you are sincere with yourself, and you allow the Holy Spirit, God is ready to deliver you. Because if all these things are seen in your life, you can never experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus, God will give us the grace to deal with all those things in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I swear that the other point of that the other important of any of these. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Now quickly, what are the benefits of new wine? What are the benefits of the new wine? What are the benefits of new wine? Number one benefit that we enjoy when the new wine of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive grace and ability to obey to obey God and do His will. Amen? You will receive grace and ability to obey God and do His will. Especially the grace that will be released on you will be the grace of you to live a holy life. Because some of us are still struggling with holiness. We are struggling with sanity. But when the new one comes, you know, let me tell you something. You can't, you can't please God without the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Does that make sense? You can't please God. You can't do the will of God without the help of who? The Holy Spirit. That's why like Jesus Christ said in the book of John, He said, It is expedient for me to go that if I don't go, Comforter will not come, which is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And also, let me tell you, you can't live a Christian life successfully without the help of the Holy Spirit. Without that new one, you can't. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He gives you the grace to live a holy life. He gives you the grace to obey God. He gives you the grace to do the will of God. So when the first benefit is the grace and ability to obey God and do His will, especially to live a holy life. First Peter, first Peter chapter one, fifteen and sixteen. First Peter chapter one, fifteen and sixteen. But as He was called is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is 
greeting. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah. That is the first benefit of being worthy. Number two, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the moment the new man comes upon you, you will talk to another man. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will begin to operate in the supernatural. You will begin to, you will begin to operate in the miraculous. You will begin to do uncommon things. They are meant to be surprised at what has happened to you. You will just tell them my secret in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 3, no, sorry, Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. 3 to 4. Act of Apostles chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. Let's hear what the Bible says. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? As of fire. And, and one sat upon each of them. Verse 4 says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them. So the second benefit of the new world is to be filled with Holy Spirit. That's why I told you that at the very soon some of you you begin to operate in the supernatural by the reason of the new world because you will be filled. Even you yourself, you will be surprised at yourself. I remember when I first gave my life to Christ in those days when one of my friends was sick and I had a teaching about laying your hands. I said, you are sick of anything, let me pray for you. And just lay my hands on you. And I prayed. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Instantly, the guy was healed. I was surprised. But not me, but the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, God will use you for signs and wonders. In your workplace, God will use you for signs and wonders. In your family, God will use you for signs and wonders. And not your friend, God will use you for signs and wonders. You see, God can use any of us to perform miracles. The only thing that we just need to believe. Believe and have upon the world. He said, This time, before the those who believe in my name, they will do what? They will lay us on the sea and they shall be done. I see you performing miracles. I said, I see you performing miracles. I see you healing the sea. By the reason of you being filled with the Holy Spirit. Number three, you will love God more. And people around you, including unbelievers. Amen? When you are filled with your enough, you will love God more. You will want to stay in His presence more. You will want to worship Him more. And people around you, including unbelievers. Because if you say you love God, and you don't love your neighbor, you are lying. Praise God. Some of us say we love God, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. But there's hatred to you. There's not forgiving you that is in your church. But when the Spirit is upon you, you love everybody. With your Christian kind of love, John 3 is the kind of God. The Bible says, For God so loved the world. That's why the atheist, God still loved them. And that's why they are enjoying the sun. They are enjoying the summer, they are enjoying the winter. Because of what? God still loved them. But if that atheist died in the sin without accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and his pastor and Savior, the Lord will go ahead. And that will be. But as long as the man ends, Everybody is enjoying the universal love of God in the book of John 3 system. Hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah! That is why some of them they just talk about Jesus is this, Jesus is that. Jesus is just looking at them because he loves them. And he's giving them a chance to do what? To repent. But the Bible says it's appointed for one to that one after death. Judgment. Amen. Luke 
chapter 10, verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your words. I can't hear you. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? Everybody. Including your own wife. Including your wife. Including your children. Including your boyfriend. Including your girlfriend. Everybody is your neighbor. You must love them. Whether black or white. Hallelujah. So, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will not be able to keep anything. Like me, I don't keep it. I don't hate anybody. People ask me why I forgive them. You know, even in forgiveness, you are helping yourself. You know that? In forgiveness, you are helping yourself. If you are keeping somebody in mind, you are hurting yourself. So that grace will be given to you to love you. Even if they slap you, it is in the second of slap. I love you. One man to say, if you slap the first one, I will not have to slap the second.
give you that grace to be a blessing to people and people that you know. That's the benefit of the new one. You know, I told you it's love. So love is what is universal. He does not know gender. He does not know color. He's just manifested universal to everybody. He will be able to help you.
So that we pray for you. You say, I want the benefit of the new wine. I want the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this year. I don't want to live ordinary life again. My first step is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your pastor. Is there any good in the congregation? Oh, anybody online, I can't see them online. Is there anybody?